so this is uh how death creates everything by what if autists uh and we are informed that we can link to power up paradise to buy incredible video game phone cases with the code what if five all right well without further ado uh do you know what this is symbol no. thing on the screen no me neither all right okay I was gonna, I was gonna pretend I was smart if you did know, and I was just gonna pick it back off of that. I don't know how people will look back on this video, but I believe this might be the most important video I've released so far in my nine years of What If Altist. I know that What If Altist is more of a history channel than a philosophy one, and <laughs> earlier in my career, I said I actively disliked philosophy, and at the time, I was judging it purely off bad philosophy. I've just come out of a difficult period of my life where I moved across the country again, lost a lot of my best friends, and had to rethink over previous parts of my life. And I've come out of it happier and stronger, but I know a lot of other folks are going through rough times, so I wanted to make a video to help them out. People often pontificate about how the meaning of life is unknowable. I think in a lot of ways that's true because life's always a mystery. We all walk our own roads and are born with wildly different circumstances, thus creating oh. a wild... Fake name says it's an alchemical symbol for the sun and moon, apparently. ...wildly different outcomes. However, I think our society is inherently cowardly and shrinks away from difficult questions... Our age is so cynical and hates anyone who tries to do anything. Believing in things like love, honor, duty, courage, the truth, or being sincere will result in digital culture mocking you as arrogant. Try to wear anything fancier than a t-shirt or read classical literature, you'll be called pretentious. Society wants you to be an anonymous cog who consumes... It's uh, the symbol is uh, after a bit of first off, it's called double dragon, which is cool. Uh, secondly, it's about transmutation. Uh, okay, so he was a base, he was right, a base metal into silver and yep, yeah, yeah, spot on silver and gold from lead, I guess. I'm just thinking of that stupid song now from uh, the Santa Claus Christmas special of meaning or mortality. Silver Many people are going gold. to call me arrogant for even attempting this question, but as my dad used to say, if nobody in the room is doing the right thing, that means it's your job. Our age is quietly dying from an inability to deal with our own mortality and meaning, which is... It's a very pronounced but right there. ...incredibly ironic, and I don't pretend to develop a new truth here, but I'm going to give this a shot. I think the real short answer for the meaning of life is simple. It's the meaning of life is to stand before death in a manner you can take pride in. It's not a stupid quote, actually. Something, that might be something out of Dune, honestly, which I finished. And it was very good. Good for you. Uh, I'm not a fan of this line. Oh, look, my, 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 ex my standards are, like, super low for this, okay? Very fair. Very fair. So, uh, Alan least, Watts yeah. said it better of uh, death should be like uh, how you feel about sleep at the end of a good day of work. No, uh, I prefer that. I never sleep, so that's terrifying. Properly. <laughs> this is a video to explain the role of mortality in life. Through this video, you will see the history of the world and society today through a different lens, and also see the crushing crisis that will kill modernity soon and is eating our society alive. As you're going to see, by looking into the riddle of death, everything else makes sense. This is honestly the worst. Oh, history, politics, and philosophy now. I think that's new. Okay, we're going to fast forward a little bit through the ad. That, you're still going to die. How about again? No matter what you possibly do, you will die. On top of that, you cannot fundamentally control how, where, or when you die. For all of you, you could die in an hour and be completely unable to do anything about it. The funny thing is that everyone in the audience knows that to be true, but me bringing it up repeatedly probably caused large numbers of you immense discomfort. Talking about death is one of the most impolite subjects in society. Kind of like talking well, about weird. religion, race, or who in the room you've slept with. When was the last time you and the homies, or even in a university philosophy classroom, have really talked about death? An incredibly ironic... Literally all the f***ing time, buddy. Literally all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Death is a major topic, just saying. Death is a ma I, I'm not... Well, especially since, like, he's been rubbing shoulders with a lot of, um, sort of rad trad traditionalist religious creators recently. They're, they're kind of obsessed with that. That's one thing you can't really say anyone on the political right isn't constantly talking about. I don't know. 
love this is that in an earlier version of this video that I uploaded to YouTube, it was age restricted, meaning YouTube doesn't want people under the age of 18 to watch it. And doesn't that just so perfectly prove the point I'm making? And I don't know if this version's age restricted. A couple things got me to make this video. The first is I was listening to Dan Carlin's podcast in World War I, and the sheer courage and fearlessness of death that the soldiers in that war had was unbelievable to me today. The trenches of World War I were the closest thing to hell that the human race has produced, with rats, disease, rotting bodies, and shells turning beautiful European countryside into a wasteland reminiscent of the moon. And single battles like Verdun, the Brushilov Offensive, or the Somme, millions of people died. Again, most of the boys who died at these battles were 20-year-old virgins who were willing to give everything to their nations and ideals. Many no. of the upper No. <laughs> no, they were uh, uh, meth addicts, primarily. Uh, huge amounts of, of drugs, cocaine, amphetamines. Both world wars, by the way, but uh, the idea that they were there and good boys and brave is uh man this is not starting good i don't think they were meth addicts before they went in i think they were given meth while they were in the trenches to be fair oh no they were absolutely uh, well i mean nazis in world war ii love that shit. but no world war one like the trenches that's how they kept things going is lots and lots and lots of coke and lots of amphetamines Okay, good the, amphetamines apparently the, the point the point is not that people who volunteered for the war effort were coke addicts. <clears throat> the point is that what kept them going was mm -hmm. was not a noble attitude towards death. No. Silly. Middle class ones lived lives significantly more comfortable than ours today. Then I compare that to the people I went to high school and college with. I know lots of people who have legitimate mental health breakdowns for the most trivial things. One of my relatives is 15, and when I was visiting him, I asked if he wanted to stay at my Airbnb overnight since I had an extra room, and it took him half an hour to work himself up to do it since he viewed it as a big risk. And he wasn't ready for it, and then after we drove 15 minutes to my place, he only wanted to stay another 15 minutes at my Airbnb since he was too anxious. I once went on a high school trip and the other kids refused to eat any vegetables, and even when we had shared dishes, they'd pick the meat out for themselves and leave the vegetables for the rest of the group. In dating today with young girls, it's too much commitment to ask them to go on a date straight, or even to ask them if they like you. You invite them to hang out. Phrase sleep with phrasing, the phrasing, the phrasing, phrasing, <laughs> the phrasing. The don't go on dates with young girls. <laughs> the what if all just love quest is not going well. Thank I you. just love how he's like, he <laughs> goes right from, they picked all the vegetables out, and also I date little, I date young girls. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time. I'm sorry. High school trip and the other kids refused to eat any vegetables. And even when we had shared dishes, they'd pick the meat out for themselves and leave the vegetables for the rest of the group. In dating today with young girls, it's too much commitment to ask them to go on a date straight or even to ask them if they like you. You invite them to hang out, sleep with them, and then drag it out until what we call a situationship occurs, since everyone involved is too anxious to be adults and commit to a real relationship, which, need I remind you, can be canceled at any time. Thank you, Manic Jackson, for membership. Appreciate it. Our society has done something very, very wrong if our ancestors only a hundred years ago were able to face the horrors of the trenches at the same age and were incapable of functioning with even the slightest amount of stress. I've had... I mean, they weren't capable, though. They were mentally destroyed by it. They, like they shell never... shock was literally a thing because of World War I. Like, no, nobody was able to handle that. The best you could say was a, few, a lot of them survived. Three Extraordinary amounts of PTSD and violence brought home to wives and children, drug abuse, drug usage, um, the worst shit came home from the wars. That's how it works. Yeah, and that's why Deleuze exists. Myself. It's not, well, it's not solely the name. Self Thank you, Manic Jackson. I appreciate that. Love and solidarity, comrades. Imps, squids, and squimps. I'm sure that's a slur somewhere, so we're going to regret that one, but thank you. At age 16. The second is when a flying branch was seconds from breaking my neck on the Appalachian Trail. And the third is when I went on a shamanic spirit quest and went to hell <laughs> and thought I had already died. This sounds really edgy, but death makes the world so much more beautiful. Oh, when Jesus Christ, go back, go back, go back, go back. I, I need you. I, I, I'm going to recontextualize. Uh, I want you to just 
they're going to receive the, oh my God. He I is know. sharing the, before this one, he's giving three examples of, of, of confronting, of, of difficult things he's done or confronting death or like he's playing with that right now. Very, very wrong. If our ancestors only a hundred years ago were able to face the horrors of the trenches at the same age and were incapable of functioning with even the slightest amount of stress. I've had three near-death experiences myself. The first was when I nearly self-deleted at age 16. The second is when a flying branch was seconds from breaking my neck on the Appalachian Trail. And the third is when I went on a shamanic spirit quest and went to hell and thought I had already died. This sounds really edgy, but death makes the world so much more beautiful. Was that what you wanted to hear? He went on a shamanic I just wanted to know what he went to hell. He, Notice so he didn't say he didn't say he had a vision of hell. He said he went to hell in a shamanic spirit quest. Hey, I, I've I've done my share of drugs. It's not fun, but I I wouldn't say it's like a near death experience. I, uh, uh, that's a very fascinating three things to believe he's been close to death from a branch almost hitting him, contemplating self mind crafting, and then doing drugs on a shma on a or well, he doesn't even say that so we don't even know what that is well that last one's Man. strange the first the second one's like huh that branch almost killed me and the first one is, is probably the most legitimate but like i can't get over because here's here's the thing brooks here's the thing is he saying he went on a shamanic spirit quest and it felt like yeah. he was gonna die or did he go on a shamanic spirit quest to the underworld and that's why he thinks he was close to death. Because that's what that sounded like to me. As someone who has been on a handful of trips, um, I would totally accept if he said he'd been there. Like, okay. shit's real. Shit's real. I'll take shit's that. real. I, I'm okay with... It's, it's the... A branch almost hit me on a, on, a tra on a hike that I'm like, ah, it's kind of a weird three things to pick, but okay. When you pull yourself out and realize that you're still alive, the world looks much, much brighter. The sky is blue or the flowers smell better and music sounds much more beautiful. The tension mm. of life and death is better than any drug and feels That's scarier than the picture of the skull. Feels like heroin. The adrenaline pumping in your veins makes your body tingle all over with excitement. Just talking about it brings a smile to my face. This video then, in many ways feels That's not if you've been confronted with death, that is not the reaction. Smiling is not the reaction. Well, no, when you're confronted with death, the, the response is uh, eat, pray, love. That's how that works. Liberating for me to write, since these are things that you can't talk about at all in polite conversation. When I lived My... in France, I'd go to the local... Yes. Can't we? Hang on. What did you say again? Can't talk about this in polite this conversation. This video, in many ways, feels liberating for me to write. Since I don't, I, I don't know. Like he thinks he's being edgy or something. I, I, I have no idea what the basis for that is. People talk about death literally all the time. These they are things that you the can't talk about at all in polite conversation. When I lived in France, I'd go to the local Irish pub, and there was a French Foreign Legion encampment nearby, so I heard their stories about the colonial wars that France still fights today, notably in Mali for them. First of all, that's a much bigger and bloodier war than anyone gives it credit for, which isn't hard since no one's heard of it, and lots of them had horror stories, but they all said the same stuff that I did about death, that being close to it's terrible, but also the most exhilarating and profound experience a person can have. The truth is built off paradox. Everything is its own thing, but it's also the opposite at the same time. There is nothing worse than death, but there is also nothing better than death. That's what does that mean? Part. There's there's nothing worse than death. I'm I'm ignoring the whole part about how he he got the opinion of the people on the. French foreign stock, legion stock side of the gun talking about their experiences close to death and colonial wars but i'm 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 perplexed by this there's nothing worse than death but nothing better than death where we'll start with the riddle of death 
This video pulls a lot from the book The Riddle of Steel by Sheldon Solomon, which is one of the best philosophy books I've ever read, and introduced me to this theory about how death drives everything in life. I'd highly recommend it, and it's a shorter read, around 200 pages. The only way you can understand anything is through its boundaries. It's arguable if Russia or Brazil are part of Western civilization, but you know what's not arguable? That China and Iraq are not part of Western civilization. You only know something really exists. Wait, hang on, hang on. Let's hear it one more time. Sorry, we missed we missed a map here. The West, Orthodox, Chinese. So there is the West and Chinese. The West down here in Australia again. Okay. And then red. There's just a lot of red. This part of South America is red. South South Pole is red. Anything is through its boundaries. Antarctica is red. It's arguable if Lost Russia or Brazil are part of Western civilization. But you know what's not arguable? That China and Iraq are not part of Western civilization. You only know something really exists once you see it not existing somewhere else. We never thought how special it is to have air to breathe until we entered outer space and saw how rare it is in the cosmos. No, I'm pretty uh, sure. I'm pretty sure we figured that out when people choked and drowned on Earth. I'm pretty sure we were strangling people long before we went to space. Every major religion and practiced philosophies. I don't know what that means. Say that the number one thing to be happy is gratitude. I'm pretty sure and you need to So the the book he's referencing, yeah, Worm at the Core, is the idea that death is the worm uh eating away at us, uh pushing us to everything we do. Uh the little fear of it. I couldn't disagree with this uh thesis in basically more ways. Um I think death is a component of things, but I don't think uh I have a lot of issues with it, but that's basically it's literally the motivation for everything. Whew. Every major religion and practiced philosophies. What is what is a practiced philosophy? Does it mean just like, I don't know. If I may, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I will do the Zizek. Happiness is a conformist category. The first thing you learn in psychoanalysis is that one does not want what one thinks one wants, and happiness is not even close to it. When you're in the moment of passions, creating, doing great things, happiness doesn't enter into it. In fact, you're ready to die. You're ready to suffer. You're ready to tear yourself apart to create the thing you care about. Happiness is, can, is not part of it. I adore that, by the way. That's good, Zizek. So it's just very miss, silly that he says I this. Miss. This is the opposite of everything yeah. practice philosophies say. Well, it was, well, it's the opposite of every major religion, too. Like, how about having to be in, like, a right ritualistic relationship to God, even if it makes you miserable? Isn't that the whole, like, idea behind Kant, too? Like, you're, you're, you only even know you're doing something purely moral or as close to that as possible if it makes you miserable to, to fulfill your duty, because otherwise there's a bunch of other things that are concatenating with it. And there's, there's no, I am unaware of any actual philosophy philosopher that says gratitude is the thing to be happy i'm also unaware of religion that says this actually does does he mean like uh that sad guru jaggy guy on youtube i don't know even today most people take for granted having breathable air since we've never had to not deal with it life has meaning since it's finite look at how we treat everything that's not finite for granted in Western European cultures, we take water for granted, while other cultures will fight tooth and nail for it. Life is finite to consciousness itself. Thus, it gives our lives as individuals meaning since it creates a boundary for our... Life is finite to consciousness itself. ...own existence. Without death, you would not exist. The only reason you existed at all is that your ancestors died and felt compelled to create you to replace them. The cycle never starts without death in the first place. People Did they die before they made me? Dude, dude, dude. Are our parents necrophiliacs? Ah. Uh, death starts the cycle. Come on. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure parents had children 
to care for them in their old age and to look after their stuff. I mean, from what we know of uh, early tribes and uncontacted tribes, death is uh, not something that is necessarily feared. It's something that is, there's a revulsion around death, but that's, uh, there's a lot of sort of parts of that, but um, the reverence and sort of religiosity of burying our dead is one of the markers of what we consider to make the beginning of humanity. It's, it's, a, it's a note, it's a, Bataille makes the point in uh, erotism that labor is actually what came about. It's the thing that makes us. And there's a combination of labor with death and the burying of our dead and the tools that are shown up there that allow us to sort of see the beginnings of what we consider humanity. I, I've loved that. But this is not. However, the reality is that life cannot exist without death. Without the time pressure created by death, there is simply no impetus to push for life in the first place. If they were completely assured of their own existence... I mean, this is true. I never do anything unless I have a person literally in the room with me with a gun pointed at me. He's not talking about people. He's talking about life itself. Read Dune Sunday. Read Dune. Well, that's just self, me yelling at you. That's true, actually. ...would have no reason to put the effort into making life in the first place. We can see this in that the only immortal beings in the universe are tiny cells that don't do much because they have no... Mortalized cell line is a pop- oh, is this from Wikipedia? Okay, so there won't be any funny typos here. Pressure to do so. This is a mental concept modernity really struggles with. In order for something to exist, there also must be its opposite. With the creation of mental processes that allow good judgment, it must also allow evil judgment. Man cannot exist without woman. The day needs night, love needs hate. Without that duality, nothing exists, only the chaotic void. This is the yin and yang that so many cultures talk about. To push this point even further, I mean, the the day is a is a relation, <laughs> spatial relationship with the planet to the sun. It doesn't need Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Semaphore, for the five dollars. Last time, Rudyard said his parents thought he'd become a school shooter, and now we find out his nephew was terrified of sharing a room with him. Curious, indeed. Further, the Trinity is a manifestation of how this duality creates new stuff. Man and woman makes a child, the day and night makes a new day, buying and selling makes the stock market, war and peace makes the nation an empire. This is why the Trinity is such an important concept in major religions, and why people are willing to fight and die over the concept. We laugh at wait, pre-modern wait. people's- He just listed like 900 binaries, and then he's like, that's why the Trinity is so important. Like, it's so... Oh, my God. Don't skip your symbolic logic courses, kids. Don't don't skip out on that, that little baby toy where you put the shapes into the ball. <laughs> was ...dying over religion, but they were dying over what they viewed to be the basic nature of the cosmos while we'll fight over an economic system. Down with Team Q! Which this is, there's, like, two two pages here. It's like a... He just he just said, "Ah, oh, just you missed it. Just go, oh. jump back like twenty seconds." Okay. Well, that's fine. Fuck it. Nope, it's to be the far. basic nature of the cosmos over religion, but they were dying over what they viewed to be the basic nature of the cosmos. Well, we'll fight over an economic system, which is more shallow. There are two yep. symbols that See? are back in the day. They didn't fight over economic systems; just the power structures of economic systems. Um. We're dumb. Things were better before. Good okay. to contextualize death with. The first is the one taken from the book, The Worm at the Core. Inside the apple that are... Wait, okay, just, just to be clear. So, this is how many sources he lists, okay? I'm not even going to count them. It's more than Zynga. Not my Zynga. My... We, are, we are 10 minutes in. He has only cited The Worm at the Core, which, as he has informed us, is very short. There are 26 minutes left. How is he going to get these in here? Hey. For our lives, there is a worm that will devour us from inside no matter what we do. We do have lives, but gradually like, or not. It, there's 20 minutes left. If he was literally just giving, like, the title of each book, that would probably take him an additional 10 minutes. The worm eats us alive. The second is the worm Ouroboros, better known to most people from its Norse mythological equivalent as Jormungandr or the Midgard Serpent. This is the snake that eats its own tail. Yeah. Yes, In most people are unaware of Ouroboros, but most people are 
very aware of the Midgardian Serpent's name. Uh, the Midgardian Serpent is called Nidhogg, isn't it? This is shit. Fucking Ouroboros is the name everyone knows. It's such a weird way, the, the weird appeal. The Ouroboros is a snake, not a worm. And? Right. Your smith, the serpent, your also a dragon. was explicitly the not a worm for though. death, and that mortality creates life but also kills it, only to restart the process of. It's also the edge of the world in the same way death forms the boundary of life. Okay. Creation and destruction that goes on forever. This is a very useful and common symbol, and in Indian mythology, it's also why Shiva is the god of creativity and destruction at the same time. In every culture in the world, the divine feminine is the symbol for both creativity and destruction that are two sides of the same coin. This is why you're... Uh, no. 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 Thank, thank uh, you. Uh, thank you, Dan Brown. I'm pretty sure that's not even accurate to Jung. That's not even accurate to Jung. It's not even accurate to Rome or Greece or Western... What did he say exactly? Maybe I'm maybe I'm misunderstanding. Let's let's hear it one more time. He creates life, but also kills it, only to restart the process of creation and destruction that goes on forever. This is a very useful and common symbol, and in Indian mythology, it's also why Shiva is the god of creativity and destruction at the same time. In every culture in the world, the divine feminine is the symbol for both creativity and destruction. You no, know, nope. every 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 culture single culture in the world, every one, not even not even in in. X, Y, and Z big ones. Every single one. I still like how he keeps using the Dungeons and Dragons TMF though. That's funny. That are two sides of the same coin. This is why your genes make you want to impregnate that hot girl with a horrible personality that will make you miserable. Because she has a better immune system that means that your descendants in a hundred years have a higher chance of surviving the plague. Oh, look at that immune system. It's, it's just so far off. Um... And immune system Shiva, is so fucking hot. Sh Shiva's... I'm just... I have so many things in my brain. Shiva is not the god of creation and destruction. I wanted, I'm wanted. i trying to figure out where he got that No, Shiva's only head. destruction, right? Shiva's destruction. Um, Who's... Uh, who, is, is there a god of creation? Hang on. Um, I don't... I mean... He's literally called Shiva the Destroyer. He also creates, but he's the destroyer. Shiva, well, Shiva doesn't really create. Shiva creates space for creation kind of thing. But I'm not super up on my... Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm not that guy. Let's, let's spin some. This is worth a second. Uh, Shiva, the auspicious one. Um... The great god is one of the principal deities of Hinduism. He is the supreme being in Shaivism, one of the major traditions within Hinduism. Shiva is known as a destroyer within the Trimurti, the Hindu trinity, which also includes Brahma and Vishnu. Yep. Um, Brahma is the creator. Yeah. Yeah, so no, Shiva's not the creator because there's another god called Brahma that's the creator. I'm, I'm trying to... Where did he read that then? Uh, like... Oh, just a heads up, by the way, you're cutting out a little bit. I think your noise gate is oh, a little strong. Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, if I had to guess, probably Jor Jordan Peterson Maps of Meaning. 100% Jordan Peterson. I, I guarantee you he didn't get it from Joseph Campbell, which he spelled it wrong. Cause it's Fucking, it's, Jor it's Jordan Peterson. It's 100% Jordan Peterson. I'm trying to see if there's anything else here. There's, yeah, Oriental, it's either Oriental Mythology, maybe... Maybe Houston's world religions. Ugh. This is why our genes often select us for degeneracy and lusts and other desires. Well, mystics and the wisest people in the world have told us for all of history that to humble ourselves and for all of history, mystics have told us to humble ourselves. And be content is what will make us happy because be content is what will make us happy. What? Hang on. Ourselves and be content is what will make us happy. Okay, so the secret to happiness is to be content. Got it. Because 
the guy who has five children through five baby mamas passed on his genes, well, the sage who achieved enlightenment and true happiness died childless. I'm not seeing the selling point here. So, hang on. People in the world have told us for all of history that to humble ourselves and be content is what will make us happy because the guy who has five children through five baby mamas passed on his genes, well, the sage who achieved enlightenment and true happiness died childless. What the fuck? So you could be Genghis Khan and have access to all the sex partners you want and populate the world with your progeny and be remembered for all time, or you could die childless. Eh? You know? Do oh, we also, value? But also, the, the, didn't um, didn't uh, somebody pointed out in chat? Didn't um, fuck. What's his name? Just real quick, uh, Simifar mentions it. Siddhartha, but, that's it. Didn't Siddhartha have a son? Shiva, Shiva as a as a god, isn't Shiva the creator? It's Shiva the destroyer. Shiva has other forms. There's a lot of complexity around it, but I mean the easy easy response, and it's why it's not working. It didn't come out correctly when I was first saying it is Shiva is not like a yin yang binary creator destroyer. Yeah. That's, that's a silly, silly thing to say. I, I might as well say that about everything. If we're going to do it to Shiva, there's a lot more and it's not just simply like creation. It's destruction and the destruction itself is creation. It's a creation of possibility space for other gods and also other forms of Shiva. There's a dance that's involved. It's it, there's a whole bunch of shit, but it's like this very, because Sunday, you've done a video on how basically the West colonized religion, and this is like a perfect example of it. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because this is the West additionally colonizing religion by creating a facsimile of some oriental form of religion and then superimposing that. On, on all oriental forms of religion, basically. Yes. He's, this, is the, this, is, this is orientalism as a thing. This is, amazing. this is like Orientalism squared, though, because he's also applying it to Christianity as well. I believe the story of Adam and Eve really happened. Case in point. Although maybe not in the way... We... Wait, what? Hang on. Sorry. That's a good way to start. That's a really good way to start. Tree, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, first of all, but whatever. I believe the story of Adam and Eve really happened, although maybe not in the way we expected it to have. Animals... How do you expect... The story of Adam and Eve happened, Brooks. I, I, <laughs> if he doesn't explicate that. Oh, look, a dog. That's cute. Of no knowledge of death. A wild dog has a life of drinking water from streams, living naked, and no medicine to deal with any of its illnesses. However, it shows domestic dogs with fur. For almost any dog you see is happier than almost any human. Dogs are unaware of their own deaths, and as we understand it, no animal has knowledge of their own mortality. That's animals bullshit. Just... Depends on what you mean by knowledge. Do they have the? Do they have the concept of biological degradation without complex language? Probably not. Do they? Do they understand the notion of, uh, hey, that elephant I used to hang around with, it's gone, it's sad. Obviously, there's, there's actually a lot of animals that mourn. There are animals we actually that have burials. We have animals that uh, elephants, as you mentioned specifically, yes. uh, crows, I believe, mourn partners and parts of their flock. Uh, dolphins, whales, they mourn. So that's stupid. In the Garden of Eden, or their lives belong to God, and that they are not conscious of their place in the world, and thus are judged for the things they were biologically programmed to do, without their own individual judgment weighing them down. The animals feel happy since they just act with what their nature demands in that moment. Around 70,000 years ago, humans had a breakthrough called the Cognitive Revolution. After that point, we started having cold. So he thinks the story of Adam and Eve literally happened. Cavemen. With cavemen. And a uh, seven-headed snake. So I think here's, what's, here's what he's... I, th I think I know where he's going with this. Humanity contracted a virus from a fruit. Which <laughs> mutated our brains. And made God very angry. Well, he's saying that cognition uh, itself was the moment of awareness of good and evil and knowledge. 
And at that moment, the awareness of death is what drove us forward. He's saying Adam and Eve learned of death, that the knowledge is death. Because again, he's too stupid to actually read the Bible and know the words in it. So he thinks it's just knowledge. And he thinks knowledge is knowledge of death. And that actually is what drove Adam and Eve to change into what we know as people today. It kind of looks like it's knowledge of intestines, really. That's kind of also emphasized here. Also circumcision, apparently. Oh, good, good catch. Yeah, indeed. Um, although it would be, uh, I'm, I'm just asking caveman tools for that. It seems pretty unpleasant. I mean, they, they, they were very proactive at shaving though, as you can see. I mean, uh, look, they're very well kept. I mean, as far as genital hair goes, they're very well kept. Culture, religion, large technological revolutions, and discovered the idea of the abstract idea. Before... Good. I, need oh, good that one more, I need to hear that one more time. ...in large technological revolutions, and discovered the idea of the abstract idea. Discovered the idea of the abstract idea. Okay. okay. Beforehand, humans had the same physical makeup as today and neurological structures, but they lacked the ability to see abstract concepts. Okay. Citation needed. Tool crows can use tools. They they're able to abstract and infer. Dogs can infer. Inference is uh, have abstraction you, have you seen a dog try to get through a gate with a stick they're pretty stupid, I mean, they're actually. dumb dog dude dude i've watched grown-ups do the same thing with ladders like it's not it's not it's not a, it's not a fucking mark of of the entire species Seventy thousand years ago all and i'm trying to make a career off of uh, political theory videos on youtube so touche also was so not he. a good time in our history <laughs> yeah what the f yeah what the hell See, there is no god. This is this is proof. The supervolcano Toba in Indonesia had erupted, creating an ice age that made us a critically endangered species, with only 6,000 humans left on the planet. Exactly 6,000. What came after might have corresponded pretty closely to the Bible. There's the stoned ape theory in that... <laughs> Called it. Psychedelics radically increase trait openness, or the ability to think about abstract ideas. It would fit the biblical narrative of a group of humans overdosed on mushrooms or ayahuasca or the fruit of knowledge in order to survive the crisis and later learned about life, death, and abstract ideas. This is, this is what, what happens when anyone does ayahuasca once. And they think it's the most profound thing they've ever done. And they think it must be that for everyone. That This is what enlightenment is. That this is how it comes about. Uh, and they aren't able to put it in its proper context. Well, like, w what if, just hear me out here, they've got organizational uh, forms, obviously. They're, they're in communities with each other when they're doing this. They're building shelters. They're building tools. Maybe they figured out, hey, uh, when I build a tool this way, it works really well. When I build a tool this way, it doesn't work so much. There's a correct way to build a tool. There's a wrong way to build a tool. Oh, what's this? We have concepts of correctness and things like that emerging. Like, how, how about that? Most of our, most of our, um, our, our, our early reflections on concepts and things like that come from people doing, uh, like, like, basic experiments with, with shadows and, and light and, and building shelters and whatnot. And, and, you know, like, figuring out just how to arrange stuff to, to make, stuff kind of work for us in a really basic way. I don't know why on earth you would need mushrooms to achieve that. Or why on earth mushrooms would even give you that. Like, it's just giving you more raw experience, ultimately, to something that's that naive. So, do you get to experience ego death, which is pretty cool? Um, yeah, but wouldn't you need, like, the kind of self-awareness that he's saying is the product of that in order to have ego death in the first uh, place? I just always have questions when it's clear that someone did a thing once and they apparently had a Christian style religious experience. It's, I always want to just talk to their babysitter and find out like, what did you say and how did you guide them? And why would you do this to another person? Yeah. Did Damien really go to hell in that, in that? No, he, I mean, if he was on this, yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I, uh, trips are, I, I give people room on like how they talk about it. But if it was a religious experience that's Christian-based, it's kind of sad to me. 
because that's not his fault. Well, he, he said shamanic spirit quest. So I'm going to assume ayahuasca. Not Christian, but. We left God's garden when we learned about our own deaths in the realm of ideas, which in this biblical worldview belongs to God. Thus, the most traumatic event in history happened. It supports my thesis that with the awareness of death came the cultural breakthrough in which humans developed religions, cultural differences, technological progress, and more. You remember that part of the Bible where God sent them out of the garden because they learned about death and the domain of ideas which belongs to God? This is how humans were able to colonize the whole world and drive every other species of hominid extinct. It's interesting to look at the very- But those other species of hominid also used tools and had clothes and culture and things. 130,000 views. Yeah. I don't, we're, we're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> various innovations that came out of the cognitive revolution because they're really the strategies humans use to deal with death. Let me go through them. The first is culture and ethnicity. We subliminate ourselves into a shared culture as a way of feeling like we belong to something bigger. And I need to hear that one more time. We because they developed religion throughout the college. Interesting to look at the various innovations that came out go. of the cognitive revolution because they're really the strategies humans use to deal with death. Let me go through them. The first is culture and ethnicity. We subliminate ourselves into we subliminate ourselves into a shared uh, culture as a way of We subliminate ourselves into a shared culture. Okay. That's what I thought I heard. Just making sure. Feeling like we belong to something bigger. If I know the American nation will continue the way of life I belong to longer than I live, that'll put me at ease. This is also a genetic strategy in that nations traditionally have shared genetics. And so, say, if you're dying for your nation, genes that you share with other people will survive, even if you as an individual die. What am I looking at here? And uh, just mentioning semaphores, right? Subliminate is not a word. Sublimate is... Well, he'd still be using that wrong. He'd still be using it wrong, but it's at least a real word to use wrong. Subliminate. I'm assuming he meant sublimate. Maybe, Eliminate. maybe, maybe he meant sublate. But now we're linking. Uh, so let's see. Through this uh, sad, sad sublate, ramble. sublate would work if he meant sublate, because that that's. I mean, it's it's still not. I mean, to sublimate. Um, no, it doesn't work. No, I'm, but, I'm but, trying but, to be generous. But sub, sublate works. Like when you sublate something, you assimilate it to a larger but thing. So, so. so, okay, so he's done this thing where he's put a thread narratively from through everything uh, without actually making a single argument or, or actual inference or speaking to anything but just gesturing at emotional concepts. Well, yeah, has he said anything beyond that at this point? I am shocked that he hasn't. This is what a faultist, after all. People use national symbols and myths to create a shared national cult that also survives before and after cool. death. This leads to the second strategy, that being art. Beauty can last forever, what? or at least very long amounts of time. The most beautiful thing I've seen in the whole world during my life is Hagia Sophia, a knife which in was my built. Home. That's the saddest thing ago. I've. That's the saddest thing he's ever said. Maybe that's that's actually the saddest thing anyone's ever said ever. And I've never heard anything that's so depressing. That's so sad. Okay. The Hagia Sophia as the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. Look behind him. That's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. It's a nice, soft, kind of pinkish color. That's so sad. It's got a, it's got a well. No, it's not, it's not a nice looking fence in front of it, but it's sturdy. It's got a nice hat, though. That's so sad. That is... I mean, oh, look, God. It's, it's probably, look, it's probably a cool... Look, scene. dude, I feel just, like, I'm feeling worse and worse. It's probably The idea a cool that someone scene. went for a trip and ended up in hell, that's someone else's responsibility to stop that from happening. But then it had this level of impact on him. He considered it a near-death experience. Like, at that point, I'm just sad at this point. I mean, like, look, it's it's... Hang on, it, it, it's, it's got aesthetic value. Look at this thing. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life, but it's not the worst That's thing why I've ever seen. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying 
Oh, it's sad that he said it looked cool. He said it's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen in his life. Maybe the man likes domes. Have you thought of that? There are better domes. Those are some nice domes. No, there are better domes. Plus, all this is basically remade, so whatever. The people who were building it, I'm sure, knew that they were making the most beautiful thing in the world. And I bet every single one of them would be happy <laughs> if they thought we still believed that nearly 2,000 years. <laughs> you come home to your newborn son. Your wife says, oh, isn't he the most beautiful thing in the world? No. Years later. Every artist wants to make something beautiful and true that will last longer than their lifetime. It would make me the happiest man in the world if I realized people still watch these videos centuries from I saw that painting on a puzzle. Now, if the nation allows your genes and culture to survive, art allows your soul, personality, and essence to do so. Soul is green, apparently. Speaking of Hagia Sophia, the third strategy is religion. Religion obviously gives an afterlife, or the idea that the soul lives on after death. Humans, by all accounts, need- What about those- what about those religions that don't say your soul lives on after death, which include, by the way, Christian religion for most of its existence? There's no knowledge in the grave for a reason. ...to believe in an afterlife, since we're the only society ever in history not to have one. The afterlife- I mean, I mean, I would- Hey, how are you doing? Did you want to bring up Shiva earlier and then completely ignore the, you know, multiple billions of people who believe in that or Buddhism? Which is, I think, the majority of the world, yeah, it doesn't or really have an afterlife. annihilationism or Judaism, for God's no, sake? No, no, just, dude, just take the majority of religions in the world. There's no after death. Like, death isn't a thing in the same way in Hindi and, uh, I mean, all of those. Brahmanism? No, it... I'm so confused. He really just thinks everyone's into Jesus. Well, I think he really thinks that every religion is, is basically the just... Hagia Sophia is just so fucking depressing that that's the most beautiful thing. Jesus Christ. I mean, he's shown paintings here that are more artistically impressive than the Hagia Sophia, but... I mean... It, it's... it's Yeah. He, he, when he thinks of religions, he thinks of, this is Christianity, but this is the... This is the blue deck... Or this is the red deck, or whatever. It's like Magic the Gathering. They're all the same. They're just different themes. And the themes are just... Eh. Islam is just desert Christianity. Doesn't even need to be nice. Which isn't in, in, from a desert anymore for some reason. Most pre-axial age ones weren't. However, every... That painting's society... better looking than fucking... <laughs> it's... it's, it's this is someone who's played far too much like Crusader Kings and fucking I don't know, two ways agnostic societies fail. Well, this is not true. Uh, well, well, hang on. So this, so totalitarianism, Nazi Germany, communism, can Nero Caligula. Those are the same societies. Chen, he's this, talking about the Chen Dynasty. Oh, I got that. But Nero and Caligula were the same society in this system the state becomes replaces the divine with megalomaniacal rulers causing mass death as a want of imprinting their and their authority this almost always burns out in about a generation or two and german sec did not replace the divine they utilized it constantly they were a deeply religious catholic christian society also i, th I think agnosticism in, in germany long predates nazism uh, two, Epicureanism, ancient Greece and Rome, the modern West, ancient Babylon. In this model, since there's no broader standards that the society believes in everything, sorry, that society believes in, comma, everything degrades into degeneracy and decadence. People stop having kids, being able to fight the upper class, crush classes crush the lower classes. A society without religion is like a nation without a capital. I'm very hesitant to have Chen, the Chin Dynasty included in there, given that I would say it is not a wild thing to say that a lot of that and the cities, like, this is the foundation of, like, modern China. 
but it's, I'm just, I know. wouldn't say it necessarily. Well, I mean, it was a, what, 11 years then? Like it was fun. Cause it was just the one emperor. Like, is that what he's talking about? Like the whole <laughs> society. Okay. Hang I'm on. I'm so confused. I don't know enough about this also, era and I don't want to say too much, but like, this feels really wrong. Well, what does it mean for it to be agnostic? Or is does does he mean that they were agnostic with respect to like a a, a Judeo Christian style singular Jesus. deity? Hundred percent. Because they believed in spirits. Like China's had religious cults proliferating throughout it for forever. I'm. It's it's kind of just dumbfounding. I mean. Caligula, like to call it a society when he was like what in charge for four years isn't like, uh isn't Calig like Caligula didn't last very long he also is there's a that's there's a, a fucking society there's also like a, three and a half years i'm gonna google this shit he, he also claimed divinity didn't he i thought that was like a big thing about Caligula um um, I'm hesitant to say yes because I don't know enough. Hang on, I'm gonna pull up Wikipedia here. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. I remember reading about this a while Flames ago. Flames of Divinity. Yeah. yeah, that's where I got that phrasing from. I was I was literally reading this a little while ago. Uh, Caligula took things a step further and had those in Rome, including senators, worship him as a tangible living god. That seems like a perverse opposite of agnosticism, actually. Well, he said the state replaces the divine with megalomaniacal rulers causing mass death as a one of imprinting their authority. Which is a kind of oversimplified thing to say about Caligula, given Can I uh, make a suggestion, Brooks? What would that be? Do you want me to change the... Is it, is it the audio still? Yeah, it, 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 I think it's your noise gate. It's it's cutting you out like a... Just a it's fucking Discord, man. Split Every time. hair too soon. All right, I'm going to change it back. Sorry, speaking again? I'm just hoping it works. It's so far, it seems much better. All right, good. We'll just go with that then. I'm going to use the restroom and uh, cry a little bit and return. All right, you do that. Take your time. I'm going to refill my uh, coffee. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 